we continue on the octave of Eastern, these days in which the goal is contemplating the apparitions of the Resurrected One to reaffirm our faith in the Resurrection in the existence of eternal life, an eternal life with God or without God, that is, in heaven or in hell. Yesterday I commented in the meditation that, while it is true that man is only the animal that knows that he's going to die, we Christians, Catholics, can affirm that we are the only animals, that not that we are going to live. We are going to live forever. We are going to live. This must be the beginning, the foundation of our existence on earth. Life here is very important, but it is only a very small, almost insignificant stage of the rest of our lives with God in eternity or without God, but with the devil. If we have this faith, we have hope. We relativize the things of this world. That does not mean that we don't give the importance, but they do not have the absolute importance that they would have if they were known by life in this earth. We relativize it. We struggle to make a better world and to live better and to cure diseases and to improve our economic situation and to take good care of our family to be good citizens. But our unlimited homeland is heaven. Now, it doesn't mean that we go to heaven just like that. If there are no good actions linked to our faith, if there are no good actions, we will be closing the doors of heaven ourselves. God wants to save us. But I quote again St. Augustine, quote, The God who created us without us will not save us without us. God wants us to save us, but He wants us to cooperate with His salvation. With respect to today's Gospel, besides the fact of Christ has resurrected, which is the fundamental thing with the appearance to these disciples, it adds something that seems important to me, the demo vocation symbolized by this miraculous vision that took place after the whole night in which the apostles had been working without doing anything. Besides the word, the word is specialized. They were fishermen. They knew the lake well. They knew very well the reed, the dice. They knew how to interpret the times of the year when fishing was more abundant in more places or another. But they did not get anything. And yet, Jesus, who was not a fisherman, who was from inland, he was from Nazareth. Well, Jesus told them to fish. It is a symbol to cast the net on the right side of the boat. It is a symbol, without a doubt. It is a symbol to indicate a lot, because to be at the right hand, seated at the right hand of the Father, for example, this is how we speak of Jesus when He comes in His glory. He will be seated at the right hand of the Father. It means to share with Him with whom who he sits in the right hand, to share with him the honor of dignity, to cut the nets at the right hand means to do according to Christ's will, in obedience to Christ. In other words, there cannot be vocations indeed, better there not be no vocations. If they are not vocations to follow Christ according to the heart of Jesus, according to imitating of Christ, what sense does it make to have vocations to the priesthood or religious life, if they are not vocations that are born from a personal encounter with Jesus, with the main desire to serve and to imitate the Lord, this does not mean that there cannot be other types of vocations. I believe that there are some young people, not so many, but fortunately do exist, who have a great level of generosity and who dedicate their lives to very worthy social words they go to work in places of poverty or even a great risk because of the political situation or the situation of lack of security, of violence, and they do with ONGs. And there are, at the service of the needy people, ONGs of medical types. It is not a large percentage of young people 
to this, it would be wonderful if there were more. But these young people exist and deserve to be applauded. This does not mean that they have faith. Some have it, some don't. It does not mean that they want to consecrate themselves to the church. It does not mean that they want to consecrate themselves to God. It is possible that some of them, if they had been well oriented at the beginning, could have been religious, nuns, priests. In any case, the priests, the religious, are person consecrated to God, depending, for example, on the consecration to which they belong, or also on their feelings on the Lord's call to them. They will do social work. Some of them are extraordinary foundations. They have marked and marked the history of the church. But the essential thing is that they are persons consecrated to God. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who knew a lot about this, used to say that she had not found it in ONG, but a religious consecration. And that was not a criticism, neither for the ONGs, nor for the people who work in them, but a reaffirmation of her own vocation. This is our religious congregation. Mother Teresa nuns are obligated to pray two hours a day during the enormous amount of work they carry out, often not only tiring, but also risky, for example, the work with the 80 patients. Therefore, let us cast out our nets to the right side of the boat. Let us cast our nets to invite young people to engage in religious consecration. But let, the, let us speak to them about God, of the consecration to God. God is the only one for whom is worth living father, mother, wife, children. That is to say, the possibility of having a family one's own country, one's own security, one's own illusions. God is the only one. He is the one who is worthy for Him, out of gratitude to Him, to give His life for us. He must be ready to live everything, perhaps for many, many years to come. We will have to assume that there are few vocations. The figures are very difficult. They confirm it every year. There are fewer and fewer seminarians, although it is not the same in all the places. In the more religious places, where they cast the net on the right side of the boat, or in the more religious institutions, there are still vocations, or even many vocations, in the more secularized places, or where they no longer cast the net because those who were supposed to cast it no longer believe in the priesthood or in consecrations, there are no vocations or very few. Let us trust in God. Let us put the future on the church in His wise and power hands, and let us do our part knowing that we do not preach in the name of Christ and invite the young people to follow Christ completely. Vocations will be an impossible task. Amen.